This is Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. On today's program, I'll be sharing a message titled, God's Shortlist. The Lord calls men and women into ministry, yet it is up to them to develop the call that He has placed upon their lives. The calling comes from God, yet the consecration to the call comes from us. Join me for part two of the message, God's Shortlist. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. Notice 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. It says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. So we would say it this way. God's looking all over this earth to find people whose heart is perfect towards him. Notice this, because he wants to show himself strong on their behalf. So tonight, God is looking all over the earth for people that will qualify themselves, for people that will be faithful to what he has asked them to do. Anything God asks you to do, it's important. Anything the Lord would emphasize to you, there's a reason why he's emphasizing that to you. And so the scripture says God is looking all over the earth. His eyes are roaming all over the earth. And he's wanting to show himself strong. That means he's wanting to show up big on behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. And so God calls us, and it's a unique calling, but God never asks us to do stuff we can't do. God only asks us to do stuff that he will enable us to do. So no one will ever be able to stand before the Lord and say, Lord, you called me, but guess what? I just wasn't able to do it. No, God calls you. And you have to prepare yourself. You have to develop yourself. You have to give yourself to the call, to develop that call. So tonight, let's think about people in the Bible that his eyes were going throughout the whole earth and he was wanting to show himself strong and he found somebody. And we'll go over to the book of Genesis chapter 6 in verse number 1. And it says this, And when man began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive, and they took as their wives as many they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. And Nephilim were on the earth in those days. Also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of man, and they bore children to them, these were mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. I'm reading that portion to let you know that this is a picture of chaos on the earth. It was a picture of sin. It was a picture of people going in the wrong direction. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So God looks out over the earth and he says, people's heart is dwelling on evil continually. And there's wickedness, and it's in every direction in verse number 6. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. Now notice verse number 8. We're talking about God's short list. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And you know, he had a wife and he had sons and they had daughter-in-laws. But think about it. He found favor with God. My thought is he made the short list. It is a time whenever there's wickedness, there's rampant wickedness and people in sin, but yet there was a man named Noah that found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Let's just say you're at work. Let's just say you're the only one that wants to serve God. Let's say everybody else is blaspheming the name of the Lord, but you're wanting to honor the name of the Lord. And you may say, Lord, do you see me here? God sees you there, 
because Noah was in a very similar situation and it grieved God that he'd even created man. But yet God looks down and he says, but this man Noah has found favor or grace in the eyes of the Lord. And in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number six, it talks about Noah's life and it says, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So Hebrews eleven six, without faith it's impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Verse 7, by faith Noah, being warned of God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Noah saw there's a storm coming. Noah knew there's disaster, there's total calamity is coming, but he moved with fear and he saved his whole household. So you got to think in terms of your faith in God, not only is preserving your life, your faith in God can save your whole family. And I'll say this, whenever you reject faith in God, you know, you reject God's plan. You have a certain amount of blood on your hands. I was reading yesterday about a couple and they'd gone to the Museum of the Bible and they were with the Federation of Freedom from Religion Foundation, a vowed atheist. Well, I got to looking at their life and I thought, who are these people? So I Googled them and one time they'd been in church and led a church and then they came out and said, we're atheists, we're turning away. Well, you know, I read that same couple. They had a kid, had a child. And I thought to myself, it's one thing to grow up and just kind of be neutral, but it's another thing to grow up in a family where they're not training you up in the way you should go. They're training you up in the way you shouldn't be going. And I think, what kind of blood is on a person's hand whenever they raise a child to believe there is no God? Or you raise a child to deny the Bible as the inspired word of God. Well, this is the opposite. Noah had a reverence for God, and his faith saved his whole family. I tell you, I'm not going to be content just to get in myself. I want the whole family in. Does that make sense? I'm not, okay, I'm up here. Where's everybody else? No, well, we're all going on this thing, you know. Another person that made the short list was a lady named Rahab. And Rahab made the short list. But not only did she make the short list, hear this, she was responsible for her whole family being saved. I mean, Rahab, she got her whole family in. So my thought here tonight is it's not only about you being in the short list, but, you know, because you're blessed, your family's blessed. Now, most of us maybe haven't seen this part of the story, but in Mark chapter 4, whenever Jesus is in the Sea of Galilee and tells the disciples, get in the boat and go to the other side of the sea, the Bible says they got into the boat, and then it says this, and there were also other little boats with them. Well, they got in the boat, and you remember there was a storm, and Jesus got up and rebuked the storm, and there was a great calm. Well, it wasn't as if only the boat with the disciples benefited from Jesus that day. There were a lot of other little ships, and they were going, thank God Jesus is in the sea here, you know. I'll put it this way. There were probably boats in the sea that benefited from Jesus rebuking the storm that day that have not a clue or had not a clue why that storm all of a sudden dissipated and died out. They had no idea why it died out. They just thought it was a coincidence, but it was Jesus that acted in faith, rebuked the storm, the, the wind ceased, there was a great calm. My point is this, there are people around you that benefit from your walk with God. You know, I want to pursue God so I can be blessed. Well, I want you blessed, and God wants you blessed with people. It's more than just us. It's about the children. It's about the extended family. It's about all these other people. In fact, if you story, read the story of Rahab, we don't have an account of her having children. So these would have been nieces and nephews that we call it extended family that was blessed because of Aunt Rahab. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to read another story about somebody that made the short list. You know why I'm telling you this? 
I'm stirring you up. I want you to stir you up to say, God, if there's only one person on planet earth that's pleasing you at this exact moment, help it be me, Lord. There's nothing more important than you pleasing God. Now you say, Pastor, I'm saved, and all it takes for me to please God is to be in Christ. And I agree, you need to be in Christ. You're not going to please him without that. But the fact is, everybody left Egypt, but not everybody made it into the promised land. And so there are a lot of people that left Egypt, but the Bible says they died in the wilderness. Now, they didn't die. They weren't lost, but they didn't get into what God had for them. Now, my point is this, God has a plan for you, but you're going to have to press in. You're going to have to pursue. So if I read all these illustrations, then it's going to take a while on this. But how about if I just tell you that in Hebrews chapter 11, we're introduced to a character by the name of Abram. We know him as Abraham. And we know that God spoke to him and that The Lord eventually called him in the 12th chapter of the book of Genesis. It says, now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and from your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. In him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, there were other people that God could have chosen, but yet the Bible says God chose Abraham. And we have a picture of why God chose Abraham later whenever God said about Abraham, I know him, I know Abraham, and I know that he will command his children in the way of the Lord after him. Now, here's what we've got to do. We've got to really realize it's not how we act when we're in church that really matters. Now, let me add to that statement. But I would like for you to act nice when you come to church, okay? But the idea is, a lot of people think, well, I acted for about 90 minutes Sunday morning. I held it all together. But you see, there's a challenge there. Your kids aren't watching you on Sunday morning alone. Your wife is not only watching you on Sunday mornings. Your husband is not just watching you on Sunday mornings. We need to realize we want to live before the Lord in a way that pleases God all the time. Why? Because his eyes are going to out the whole earth to show himself strong on those whose hearts are perfect towards him. And so there can be some stuff working in our life that's wrong. There can be some habits. There can be some behaviors, conduct, lifestyle, choices, and they're not pleasing God. Thanks for joining me today. Fulfilling the call of God upon your life is so vitally important. Someone's eternity is connected to your calling. It's the Lord who calls us. However, it is up to us to develop the call that he has entrusted to our care. The gifts and the callings of God are nurtured and developed as we remain faithful to the Lord. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.